So I'm willing to bet that if you were trying to lose some weight or just get into shape, you'd prefer to have results happen as quickly as possible. Now, unfortunately, when it comes to body recomposition, you're limited by the metabolic reactions that occur within your body, which in turn, those reactions are ultimately limited by time. And if you're trying to get a six pack or just shed some you know, extra body fat, this can be discouraging at first because you aren't going to see results immediately, which is unfortunate because that doesn't mean you aren't making progress. So I'm here to share three signs you can look for to show that you are losing fat properly, even if you can't visually see the result at first. Because, you know, let's be honest, it's going to take time, but that doesn't mean progress isn't happening. So the first sign is seeing that number on the scale go down. Now this is pretty self-explanatory, and I do think a scale can be quite a useful tool for comparing and tracking numbers, but it does come with a few precautions, such as understanding what a scale can and can't tell you, and whether the practice of weighing yourself results in a positive mental outlook. First of all, body weight itself fluctuates throughout the day for various reasons that in most cases shouldn't alarm you. Maybe you had a bigger lunch, uh, maybe you're more hydrated, maybe on a specific day your friend challenged you to see how long you could go without using the bathroom, I don't know. All of this is really just to say that a scale can be a clear indicator if you're looking to see a general trend in your weigh-ins, but you shouldn't feel the need to weigh yourself every hour. In fact, that's precisely what I think you shouldn't do. Fat loss and fat gain are not that quick, so obsessively checking your weight throughout the day really does nothing good for you. If you want to know how much fat you want to lose per week, say a pound, a scale is useful for making sure you're on that track. Now, several studies over the past decade have looked into the frequency for checking your weight, and surprisingly, daily weigh-ins led to greater weight loss over less frequent weigh-ins, possibly because those who weigh daily also report greater adoption of diet and exercise behaviors associated with weight control. Now, of course, that doesn't mean you have to do this. For some people, myself included, weighing yourself once every other day is a perfectly fine option since you're probably tracking your weight loss on a weekly basis. Now, the second precaution I want to mention when using a scale is that losing weight and losing fat are different. This difference becomes more apparent when you are also able to build a little bit of muscle, and this is where scales ultimately fail. If you are able to lose fat and gain muscle, that number on the scale may not move much, if at all, and perhaps it even goes up. In this case, here is tool number two, using a mirror or taking weekly pictures of yourself. Now to be specific, I'm talking more about using a visual evaluation to gauge your entire body, not just your midsection. When we're losing weight, we tend to get tunnel vision that leads us right to our midsection and understandably so. However, if you aren't aware at this point, you should know that spot reducing isn't a thing. You can't preferentially have fat metabolized in the areas you want. Fat is metabolized for energy on a, a basis of necessity, and perhaps unironically, belly fat is usually where we store most of our fat, and it tends to be where fat comes off last. Additionally, because fat loss is a slow process, and because belly fat is usually quite stubborn, the higher in body fat you are initially, the less obvious your progress will seem in the beginning. With that said, look at the other parts of your body. Are they getting leaner? Do you see more separation in your muscles? Can you start seeing your bicep veins? If any or all of those answers is yes, then you are losing fat, and if you keep doing what you're doing, you'll eventually lose fat in your midsection. Now, if you're using visual assessments to gauge your progress, and I did this back in 2020, I strongly, strongly recommend that you take weekly pictures with the most consistent pose, lighting, and time of day as possible. You won't really see many changes in the first two to three weeks, but when you're into week nine and 10, and you look back at you know week one, two, or three, you'll see a massive difference. Now, the third tool you can use is a measuring tape. Remember, when you are losing fat, it's not just for aesthetic purposes, although that's just fine if that is your goal. However, I would argue that health reasons are even more important. Studies have consistently proven that evidence for the relationship of obesity to a number of comorbidities is quite strong. So if you find that your old clothes don't fit you anymore or that you need to start tightening that belt, well, that's a fantastic sign that you are slowly but surely losing weight. Yeah, you know, you still may not have a six pack revealed or even the beginning of a four pack, but you're on that correct trajectory and with time and consistency, you'll be there even if you can't see your abs yet. Another reason to use something like a measuring tape is if you are also building muscle during this process. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the scales tell you your weight, but it does little else outside of that. So if you are building muscle and losing fat at the same time, which again is possible, you may not see that number change. A measurement of your waist size, for instance, while you are building muscle, 
might just indicate that you are in fact making progress in losing fat, even if you can't quite see it yet. So as you can see, these tools aren't complicated. In fact, they're actually quite simple, almost to the point where it seems obvious. Yes, when it comes to losing weight, it's easy to say, well, you have to be in a caloric deficit or you, know, you have to simply eat less than what you are eating now. Yeah, that's obvious, but the process of losing fat, while simple to understand, is still a long journey. And if you're new to this, you don't really know what that process looks like, and it's possible that if you aren't seeing results in a time frame you believe you should be seeing, that you may just quit. So these tools that I'm suggesting, which admittedly are more qualitative than quantitative, are still quite effective, provided that you know how to use them. Anyway, that's it for today's session. Let me know if you have anything to add down below in the comment section, and remember to drop a like and subscribe to the channel if you found this topic informative. But until then, I'll see you all next time.